November is Native American Heritage Month and also NaNoWriMo and also no not November but it's also like I'm sure there's like a, a bunch of other November things that I, oh yeah there's Movember plus Thanksgiving and Black Friday is coming up and Cyber Monday and a whole lot of stuff happened in November so it's like super super busy super a lot of stuff we just got off of Halloween and stuff like that it's super big plus elections like child a whole lot a whole lot a whole lot a whole lot of going on so i decided i'd be reading a whole bunch of comics and graphic novels for november i'm burnt out like i'm honestly done i'm over it i'm kind of a little burnt out with readathons because i've just been like back to back creating tbr saying oh i'm gonna read all these books and i read like as much as i would like to read of those tbrs that i got so now i'm just like okay we're just gonna be comics graphic novels i've been wanting to read those for a minute it'd be great to pour myself into that plus i kind of wanted to take part in nanowrimo but mm -hmm, not the way i'm not the way i'm moving right now like i had like a really good idea that i started working on but i just been sidetracked so i really haven't poured myself into like writing that story because I've gotten such great ideas because what I decided to do was this, what, NoFap? NoFap? And, like, I started, like, I decided on that, like, prior to November, and stuff happened, so it ended up kind of, like, flowing all the way into November, so it was all, no, not November anyway, so I was like, whatever, anyway. But, like, I'm not really trying to take part in all of that community because mm, that community feels homophobic. But some of them, like, belong... <laughs> That's besides the point. But basically, with not engaging in expressing myself sexually, it has given me a lot more energy. Basically, it's... You're transmuting your sexual energy into more creative endeavors, into more interesting... Well, interesting... Just other things. Other things that aren't... Like, to be more creative and be more productive and to develop as an individual so I've just been kind of pouring my energy into other things I've been pouring my energy into more reading and although I have all this creative energy I kind of wanted to focus that into writing and to creating videos I'm still gonna be reading I just want to be re I just wanted to read lighter although I'm honestly not reading that light because I am reading no ashes in the fire it's not really that long I think it's like what yes yeah, like 200 some pages but it's also very complex for lack of a better word like it's just a lot more heavy it's i wouldn't say heavy I'd, I'd say it's not super dense either it's just a little bit more substantial as a as a book like it's a mem like it's a memoir donnell elmore's memoir of coming of age black and free in america it depicts his life growing up in camden new jersey dealing with poverty dealing with homophobia racism toxic masculinity working through that just like a lot of that just a lot of coming of age as a black man, a black queer man, or at least a black queer person, because I'm not sure how Darnell identifies. This has been a really good book. It's been a very enriching read. It actually kind of reminds me of All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson, which is interesting because I, I feel like for people who felt that All Boys Aren't Blue was more simplistic, I guess because it's a young adult memoir. I feel like this as a memoir about a black, queer, AMAB person, you, this is more of a complex, a, a, a little bit more substantial, heavier, denser read than All Boys Aren't Blue. I think they're both great in their own rights and All Boys Aren't Blue definitely serves its purpose as a young adult novel. It really can connect to a wider young adult audience and this still connects to a wider adult audience so this is definitely a good book to read if you've read all boys on blue and enjoyed it or if you didn't enjoy all boys on blue because you found it too simplistic or it's not as substantial as you felt it should have been no ashes in the fire is super substantial like it's super good so i'm enjoying this i'm like halfway through it i am looking forward to getting to the end of this learning more about darnell's life so far his life has been super interesting and he has dropped a lot of information a lot 
lot of facts about racism and homophobia in America, especially in correlation and in relation to him and his family. Growing up in New Jersey, like he gave us some history about that. He gave us a lot of facts and statistics about racism and homophobia happening in New Jersey, happening in America, happening when he was growing up. Economic inequalities that are happening in America. Like it's a really good book. I'm enjoying it so far. He's been, I'm, I was read. I'm reading this and some of these tabs are like bars, bars my nigga, my nigga is dropping bars right now, like, come on now, do, what? I really wanted to start November reading comics, just go all in on comics, but then I decided like, you know what, I've been mean to read this, I want to read this, let me go ahead and read this, so I am gonna finish this soon, and although I didn't really want to take part in too many readathons, I still wanted to celebrate, I guess, Indigathon, but definitely Native American Heritage Month, and although it's gonna be kind of light on that side for me, and still within the theme of me reading comics and graphic novels, I decided to get Surviving the City, Volume 1 by Tasha Spillett and Natasha Donovan, and I got got all three volumes of Pemmican Wars, A Girl Called Echo, Volume 1, Volume 2, and Volume 3, all about Native American, all Native American stories. I recently found out that there are, uh, there's also like another graphic novel anthology of indigenous stories from all over the world. So maybe in the future I'll, I'll get that, but I'm definitely looking forward to reading this. A Girl Called Echo is at, by Katarina Vermette, Scott B. Henderson, and Donovan yeah yes yes yeah yeah yes yeah yes yeah I'm looking forward to reading these I'm definitely gonna go read these after no ashes in the fire also another graphic novel I recently acquired was what we don't talk about by Charlotte Christensen I somehow managed to follow her. I think it was probably like when there were like a bunch of art 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 profiles on Twitter that were, I don't know, connecting, communicating with each other. I think that was around the time of the Black Lives Matter marches and they were like sharing a lot of black artists. So I think I found out about Charlotte that from there and I started following Charlotte and I saw this book and I saw the cover and they were talking about their work and they were like, uh, it just got released this year. So I was like, oh, let me check this out. I will purchase this. I love the premise. I think the premise, it, it makes me think it's going to be kind of like a, a sort of get out kind of story, like kind of a thrill, I don't know, thriller, magical realism, but I know it's going to deal with racism in an interracial relationship and especially with a black woman as the lead. So I am looking forward to that, to reading this. I may not read this this month. Maybe I will, maybe not. I might push this all the way to February for Black History Month, but I'm definitely looking forward to reading this. I am excited about this one. I was, it took me a while to get this, but, uh, and I love the art. The art is so beautiful. It looks amazing. Also for this month, I got Sister Outsider Essays and Speeches by Audrey Lord. We are supposed to be reading this also that's another November thing. I think it's nonfiction November. So for the Black Future Book Club, we will be reading Sister Outsider by Audre Lorde. The book club decided like, yeah, let's read Audre Lorde. It's not gonna be too long. It's not gonna be too much. Like, you know, it's gonna be something light to read for November. I wasn't excited. I, like, I'll be honest, I wasn't excited. Because, I don't know, I, I, I realized I'm not really that into short stories that much. I'm more of, like, a novel kind of thing. As much as I did enjoy How Long Till Black Future Month, I still haven't finished that book yet. I want to finish it before the end of the year, but it, just the different stories, I don't know. I'm just not loving an anthology of short stories, whether it's different authors or it's the same author in different short stories. I will say I did enjoy Lovecraft Country because it was one like overarching narrative. It was just different short stories that all connected to one larger story. So I enjoyed that. And hopefully I could read more books like that, that I might enjoy the premise along with that manner of storytelling. 
I'm hoping I enjoy this. I'm hoping I enjoy this. I'm looking forward to reading this and getting into some Audre Lorde. I've heard so many great things about Audre Lorde, uh, or at least I'm hoping that it taps into me in the place where I'm at right now and in the mood that I'm at right now. It just, it, it connects. I'm hoping it does. And also in that vein of black writers of like the early 20th century. I got James Baldwin's Giovanni's Room because I wanted to do a reread of this because the first time I read it, I, well, I wouldn't say the first time I read it. Technically the first time I read it was when I was in high school and I was not, in, like I didn't enjoy it. I was kind of bored with it. I was super disappointed by it at the time. And then last year I read it with the QPOC Reading Circle and they enjoyed it, but I, just didn't enjoy it as much and they just suggested hey give it a reread you might like it the second time around or you might like it a little bit more you might get it more so hopefully i don't know i hope i enjoy it more this time i feel like with my reread of the dreamers by gilbert adir which i didn't like the first time when i read it with the book club i came to kind of appreciate the dreamers a little bit more because I understood the story more in the second reread. I won't say I, I, and I still loved it. I just got to appreciate it a little bit more. This one, we will see because I already started rereading a few pages and I was just kind of like, uh, uh, I don't know. Because after reading Go Tell on the Mountain by James Baldwin, it inspired me to go pick this up because I did enjoy Go Tell on the Mountain. I think there were parts of it that I felt like, okay, we gotta cut some of this because there was a character I just wasn't a fan of. And I did enjoy James Baldwin's writing in that. So I felt like, okay, maybe if I come back to this, I'll enjoy his writing and that'll take me through the story. But so far it's weird. Like I'm reading this and I'm like, Ugh, I'm not enjoying his writing in this one. I don't know if it's the story or what, but I just wasn't, I don't know. I don't know, I just wasn't connecting to it or maybe at just this time in my life because November is super busy for me. It's super busy at work that I'm feeling like the connection just isn't happening because I'm not as relaxed, as stress-free as I'd like to be to be able to read this. But hopefully when I do pick it up, I will enjoy it. I, or at least have a good experience reading it. It's good enough to have like even deeper thoughts on it because the first time I read it and I talked about it, someone wasn't happy about my thoughts on it. So I was just like, that's what I would roll. Also in the process of acquiring books, I got Crown of Thunder by Tochi Onyobuchi because I already read Beast Made of Night, so I wanted to read the second book in this duology. I also wanna do a reread of Beast Made of Night before I read this, another reread. So I'm looking forward to reading this, see how it concludes, see how the story goes, and get another reread just to kind of re-immerse myself in the city of Kaz and to be back with Taj and just connect with this story all over again. Also, I got Smash It by Francina Simone. I'm looking forward to this. There was some controversy about some of what happened in this, of, I don't know, some of what, yeah, some of what happened in this book. So I definitely want to see for myself what, like the context of what this controversy was. I understand that the people that are, that have, that have taken offense to what is written in this book, I am not that. But I definitely want to look at it from an objective perspective coming in to just be like okay I'm not that identity but maybe I understand I might be able to understand from someone of that identity talking about this book but also I still kind of wanted to come in with my own objective thoughts going in I do love Francina Simone but I will honestly say hey this wasn't okay because reading it in context or there wasn't any resolution to this remark or whatever was going on in the books like i don't know i will read it and give my feedback hopefully i hope it's really good i'm believing in it and believing in this for francina simone because she's given some great writing advice and she's given some great talks on trope and storytelling so i'm believing that she's gonna have a great story to tell with this book finally i have slay by Brittany morris I've been wanting to read this for a while, and then I felt like after reading Warcross and Wildcard, I was like, okay, I finally need to, I need to pick up the next, like, sci-fi, computer, video game, virtual reality story, like, and especially one with a black protagonist and written by a black woman. I 
like it's about time I read this. I, I'm also considering reading Ready Player One again before I read this, so I could like read like oh read all of the sci-fi virtual reality stories, like video game stories, like read all of them, but no, I'll probably leave that for another time. Like just do a binge where I reread Ready Player One, I read Warcross and Wildcard and then read Slay. So it'll be like all video game virtual reality books. So I'm looking forward to reading this because I've heard so many good things about it. So I'm just I'm excited to see where it goes. And I think it's like a thriller. I'm I'm here for it, all in for it. I'm looking forward to it. And being that Amazon has is going to be releasing the Invincible TV, well, it's not a TV series, well, the Invincible series, animated series, I will, I need to finally pick up and read Invincible by Robert Kirkman. What, what are the other people on the, they don't list their names, but I know it's by Robert Kirkman, the creator of The Walking Dead. I am looking forward to reading this. I heard so many good things about it. I heard this is a, I don't want to say like a Superman retelling, but it's kind of like a very Superman-esque superhero story, but it goes where like DC, I wouldn't say DC wouldn't take Superman, but DC's probably taken Superman there, but they've also brought him back. And this story just goes there and it just keeps going and going, I heard, and it just gets, I don't know, it just, I, I think I've seen like Google's Invincible and I've seen some of the, sh the, the art from this and some of it's kind of graphic and very intense and violent. So I'm looking forward to it, but I'm also a little scared because I don't want to be traumatized by a book. And I heard Kirkman's kind of twisted. Like that's why The Walking Dead, the comic is the way it is because he's Robert Kirkman's kind of twisted so uh, I'm scared about this it's gonna be twisted part of the concept is also that what if we had like real life superheroes and the damage they could cause and the ways they could be careless and dangerous and reckless kind of like the boys but I think as a comic I heard it's better than the boys I heard the boys as a comic is trash but the TV series is way better or at least the Amazon series is better I am looking forward to reading this I plan on reading this this month if I don't read anything else the only I like any other comic book if I don't read any other comic book this is what I'm reading I was also thinking about finally reading Watchmen we gonna see I might push this back to December or something or another time but it's up here and also in just part of my acquisition of more books i decided to get volume two of invincible the ultimate collection also volume two of the wicked and the divine and volume two of saga because i do what i want because i'm popping mm -hmm. although i have not read like the first volume of saga and the second volume of the end of well no the first volume of the wicked and the divine i don't care I know I'm gonna like it because I've heard too many good things about them. I'm already in, I'm done, period. Period, I'm done. Also for November, I will finish Skim. I've been meaning to finish this for a long time. I got a little further into Skim so far in November. I like it, it's really good. At first I thought it was gonna be like very much like the craft in a way, like kind of like a kind of craft vi like vibe. And it does sprinkle in this at this feel of the craft, but it just feels more like a 90s indie movie, like the kind that Merrimax would make, the kind that like, well, would Merrimax make it or they would distribute it? I don't know. Either way, Mer Miramax is involved in this, in this, if this was an indie movie. And it's so, it just gives me such indie teen, movie vibes like it just gives me that and i love it because that's my kind of thing i like i like i like indie movies like kids or what's another indie movie i know there's like another teen indie movie that i really like or like welcome to the dollhouse just like indie stuff like that like that's my vibe so i love this i love the attitude i love the lead character coming of age finding her like her sapphic sexuality and all that stuff it is a little, mm, a little problematic-esque. It feels a little, uh, because there's like a, it seems 
there is a an inappropriate relationship between a, an adult, a te- well, not an adult, but a teacher and a student. And I'm just kind of like, okay, I'm not liking this part of the story. Like, this is getting a little, like, please tell me this resolves in a way that is satisfying that in that this teacher and this student it's not like I'm I'm a bit uncomfortable with this it's not making me I don't know I feel like this teenager could have a different love interest but I'm enjoying the story so far I love the artwork this is the start of the Mariko and Jillian Tamaki I guess partnership I'm assuming I don't know I don't know I don't know their lives like that but this is like I guess their first book so I'm enjoying it I'm seeing this is their this is the Tamaki's vibe and I am excited about reading this and moving on to reading Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me and This One Summer. Like, I'm looking forward to reading those as well. So this is what I intend to read for November. And at the end of it, there really isn't going to be, I don't know, I, it's, it's pretty light as far as I'm concerned because this is probably like the biggest, this is like the next biggest book that I'll be reading. And this is a graphic novel, so there should be, I should be able to get like halfway through it, through this before the end of the month. And this, I should be done reading this so I can discuss it with the Black Future Book Club. And I'll definitely be reading these. I'm looking forward to these. I am excited to read about indigenous lives and histories through these graphic novels. This will not be a, I already know this is not going to be a comprehensive history or knowledge and information about native lives and native history. And that's all I'm reading. Child. That is all I'm reading. Also, yeah, skim. I gotta finish skim. Gotta make sure that that gets. I I finish this like for sure. So it's really not gonna be that big. It's gonna be light. We ain't gonna be worried about no TBRs. We're not being able to keep. I guess the promise. The promise to myself that I'm gonna finish these. But I'm gonna finish it. It's gonna be done. Don't worry about it. You know what I'm saying? I don't gotta worry about it. You ain't gotta worry about it. I'm gonna come back with like, yo, here is the review of these books. And I said, that's it. You know what I'm saying? I said, you know what I'm saying? I right? you gonna keep it a hundred. You know what I'm saying? In my Ray J voice. I, uh, that's not really, it's kind of like Ray J. I feel like I'm channeling with, never mind. Thank you for spending your time with me. And I'm out this bitch like fleek. The fuck?